Ravi ji, I just want to ask you a few things. You know, a child's early years have a, a very disproportionate impact on the rest of their social, mental, uh, emotional life right up to adulthood. So, do you think the birds and bees talk? I mean, you know, it, normally we'd be more formal and say sex education talk on growing life skills is important. And how important are these growing up conversations? Because at a very young age, uh, these are topics that become very sensitive, but very essential. Sir, thank you so much for asking this question. And uh, I remember the days when we started our uh, Durex Birds and the Bee Stock program. And we were also seeing the resistance uh, on the growing up curriculums, not just in India, across the world. And if you just Google it, uh, and if you write three words, which is CSC, which means the continuous sex education, uh, it starts with the stop CSC. It's among the top five searches, and there's a huge lobby which supports stopping CSC, which means uh, kids should not get access to the you know, growing up education. Similar challenges are there in India also, to some extent. But very proudly telling, sir, uh, all the northeastern states, even the chief ministers are working very closely with us. And uh, there are formal MOUs signed up with the state governments. And it's not just limited to, you know, growing up conversations on sex and sexuality, but it's much beyond that. One of the very interesting part was yesterday, which was the World Hepatitis Day. And the conversations on hepatitis, the conversations on growing up, the conversations on consent, the, consent, the conversations on, you know, uh, equity, the conversations which makes, you know, kids, you know, coming close to each other, having a peer education model, where you just don't need a teacher every time to explain to them. And with, with my leadership team and with Dylan and others, we are trying to introduce something, sir, which is the first India's dictionary on five keywords, which ranges from the consent, equality, and uh, a few others, so that that dictionary reaches to everyone. And it's a very, uh, it's, it's very interesting dictionary we are working on as a concept. We're also seeing there is a big number of uh, girls who are getting pregnant at a very less age, because I have uh, launched these programs earlier in Nigeria and Africa. Until I entered uh, you know, a particular uh, geography of India, which is Northeast, I had no clue. Like there also, like there are underage girls who are getting pregnant and they have their special needs. Uh, with the help of this curriculum, uh, we, we are also supporting uh, LGBTQI plus football teams and the only football team which is with the Yaal in, uh, in the state of Manipur. The Asha workers, Anganwadis, uh, as well as, you know, every, every kind of frontline health worker has a very, very important role to play. Yeah. Because until, you know, Someone is going to tell them in the, you know, Anganwadi Day, Nutrition Day, Health Day, Hepatitis Day, uh, World Health Day. So kids will never be actually be remembering. And, you know, with them, uh, the, all the frontline health workers, they, they are a very important ambassador for creating the celebrations. Yeah. yeah. And we are in the 75th year of India's independence and uh, 25 years more to go where when the India complete 100. So the role of the frontline health workers will be increased tremendously. Yeah, I just want to speak to Dylan and uh, ask, as a brand perspective, how do you help spread the message of sexual health and well-being to your consumers and audiences? What are some of the challenges you face? We need to normalize conversations around sex. I think that we need to make it a little bit more normal to talk about this. And that's one of the things that we've been trying to do, whether it's for the, with the birds and the bees talk that's happening in the Northeast or all the efforts that we have done, uh, you know, over, I think then it will not be, it will go a long way towards reducing anxiety if we are able to do that. And I think uh, we have taken some efforts uh, towards that direction. By no means is the journey complete. Um, uh, you know, we know that a lot of the younger population is on social media and we have been using social media over the past five, seven years to get the message across to about 450 million of the young people in this country. Mm -hmm. We are also talking about uh, uh, women empowerment when it comes to uh, sexual health. You know, uh, we have actually, um, uh, through campaigns like uh, Come Together, um, you know, uh, it talked about the fact that, or, or, you know, orgasm inequality, we have talked about the fact that 
you know women have an uh, a bigger say if not an equal say in in uh, in in uh, in this particular topic and uh, we are trying to normalize conversations around lgbtqi as well in the pride month uh, that uh, uh, just got over we uh, had created a campaign called love loud and proud uh, where we actually spoke about the stories of uh, you know same sex relationships etc and spoke about how love is uh, you know uh, universal and it's uh, really normal so i think we are trying to take efforts by reaching out to uh, the youth normalizing conversations and using platforms and tools which are very relevant to them all right thank you very much